The network of eight stations provides a grid of lanes covering the entire globe, and this gives the geographical references we need to be able to fix our position. The signals from one pair of stations will give one LOP. Using a third station gives another pair, and consequently, another LOP. And at the point where these two lines intersect, we get the fix. Now, although the areas between stations are divided into lanes, which are numbered, the receiver still can't identify any particular lane without some help. By means of phase difference, it can measure its location within a lane and count the number of lanes that it crosses, but it cannot identify the actual number of the lane, and this results in what is called lane ambiguity. This ambiguity is resolved by initializing or setting the receiver to the correct lane when it is originally turned on. This is easy to do at the beginning of a voyage when a ship is generally at a location where its position can be accurately established. An Omega chart also gives the lanes in which the position is fixed, and with this information, we can initialize the receiver. The lane counters are set to the lane numbers taken from the chart. There's no need to adjust the percent of lane indicator because this sets itself automatically. Once the counters have been correctly set, the lane count continues automatically, with the numbers of the counters continuously indicating the position of the ship as it moves across the different lanes indicated on the charts. This, then, is the way the Omega receiver works. Once it has been initialized and the station pairs have been selected, the navigator takes his lane readings first from one pair of stations, and then the other pair. This gives him a line of position for each pair of stations, and at the point where the LOPs intersect, he can fix his position with an accuracy of one or two miles. Of course, if a transmission is interrupted or the receiver fails, the lane count must be re-established before the Omega system can be used again. For this reason, the navigator should always maintain a good dead reckoning track, which will assist him in lane identification. In order to reinitialize the receiver after a loss of lane count, the ship's position must be known within a half lane width, which, using the 10.2 kilohertz signal, would be plus or minus four nautical miles. Obviously, the whole problem of determining which lane the ship is in could be greatly simplified by making the lanes wider. Since lane width is a function of frequency, we can get the additional area simply by changing the frequency. This is precisely the way the Omega system resolves lane ambiguity, by having the stations transmit at frequencies of 13.6 kilohertz and 11 and one third kilohertz, as well as their basic frequency of 10.2 kilohertz. The additional frequencies are transmitted during the same time interval of 10 seconds, but the format is arranged so that no two stations are transmitting on the same frequency simultaneously. These particular frequencies were selected because of the relationship between them. For example, the frequency 13.6 kilohertz yields a lane width of 6 miles, so that four 13.6 kilohertz lanes equal exactly three of the eight-mile 10.2 kilohertz lanes. By itself, the 13.6 kilohertz transmission doesn't help resolve ambiguities because it produces smaller lanes. In order to increase lane width, we need a lower frequency, which we obtain by having the receiver electronically take the difference between the 10.2 and the 13.6 signals, giving us a much lower frequency of 3.4 kilohertz and a lane width of 24 miles. This new lane helps resolve lane ambiguity because now we have a lane three times as large in which to place ourselves. And instead of being required to know our position within plus or minus four nautical miles, we now have a radius of 12 miles in which to establish lane count. Here's the way it works. By dead reckoning or other navigational means, we can establish our rough position within one of the 24-mile lanes. Then, a percent of lane reading immediately tells us in which part of the large lane the ship is located. 
Since the 24-mile lane corresponds to three 8-mile lanes, knowing the percent of lane enables us to place the ship in one of the 8-mile lanes, and we can reset or reinitialize the receiver accordingly and resume automatic tracking. Using the same procedure with the 11 and 1 third kilohertz signal and the 10.2 kilohertz signal, we get a difference of 1.1 and 1 third kilohertz with still wider lanes of 72 miles, which in turn give us a much larger margin for ambiguity. And using the same procedure, we can work our way down to a 24 mile lane and ultimately to an 8 mile lane. In spite of the availability of the other two frequencies, the 10.2 kilohertz signal is the essential frequency needed for accurate navigation. The additional signals simply make it possible for suitably equipped receivers with the aid of dead reckoning to resolve lane ambiguity anytime and anywhere on the globe. After the receiver readings have been taken, the Omega Skywave correction tables must be used to take into account changes in the ionosphere at different locations, different times of the month and day, and the effect these conditions have on transmission. A geographical index gives the pages which apply to the different locations. And in the tables under the date and the hour, we find the amount that must be added to or subtracted from the percent of lane readings. This may also change the lane count readings. Briefly reviewing the basic features of the Omega navigation system, we begin with eight VLF transmitting stations strategically located around the globe. The stations transmit on a time-shared basis with their signals phase-locked to a common standard time. The signals divide the area between station pairs into lanes of equal width, and the lanes are further divided into 100 equal segments which appear on the receiver as percent of lane. The lanes for the 10.2 kilohertz signal are eight miles wide. The lane for the 3.4 kilohertz signal is 24 miles wide. And the width of the lane for the 1.1 and 1 third kilohertz signals is 72 miles. The Omega receiver is started and time synchronized with the transmitters at the beginning of a voyage. At the same time, the station pairs are selected, and after consulting the Skywave correction tables, the lane counters are set. From then on, the lane counting is automatic. The navigator simply takes his receiver readings, uses the Skywave correction tables to correct them, and at the point where the intersecting lines of position cross, he obtains his fix quickly and easily. When this speed and ease are added to the other advantages of the system, such as the worldwide all-weather coverage, dependability and accuracy, simplicity of operation and maintenance, it's easy to see that in Omega, we not only have a very practical system, but also one that represents a milestone in the art of navigation. Music